Hello YouTube, Tim here, and I'd like to do a build along of an elven bow. In this case, I think I was calling it the el wood elf bow. Not only because it is made of wood, or it will look like it is, convincingly so I think, but it is a bow that you could, not with too much imagination, picture a wood elf using. First of all, we want the draw weight to be a little bit lighter than usual, and my usual draw weights are approximately 40 to 50 pounds at 28 inches. So, let's make it a tiny bit longer. So normally 48 inches long is what we have. Let's make a bow a little bit more elegant, say 54 inches long. That should do just fine. So 54 inches is a great place to start. Once we flatten, it'll be 53 or 52. Once we recurve it, we'll be a tiny bit less, which is good because I found that 52 inches is a good cutoff point for shipping in, in the USPS. They tend to be a good deal more expensive when the boxes are longer than 52 inches. So let's take our heat gun, move it from there to here, and begin. First of all, cutting. This is Schedule 40 three-quarter inch pipe, for the record. Although I thought probably most of you guys can figure that out just by looking. and soft, we can snip it off right there. The remaining bow, let's take, okay, so it is 54 inches. Let's go ahead and mark the center. 27 inches right here. And then let's mark two inches on either side of the handle and a third inch. Again, you could mark two, you could mark three, make the handle larger, make the handle smaller. I tend to do both just in case I want to change things. And I like having the two marks there just for indexing. Just that way if I decide to make it two, I don't know, it's, I have it, if I want to make it longer, that's fine, or if I want to do it somewhere in between, I can do it exactly the same on both sides. So, flattening the bow. In this case, the PVC already had a little bit of a bend to it, and I'm not sure why that was. It shouldn't make a big deal either way. The basic shaping of this bow is going to occur just like every other. We'll flatten the limbs, then we'll shape the recurves. 
In this case, I'm going to use flattened recurves. They're not going to just be curved forward. I'm going to actually make a sort of see a Pipe. And let's make sure we're not neglecting this outer third of the limb. Not bad. Almost done. Great. I'm just going to move this aside. Let's see. Angle the camera over here so you can see. usual. Use the floorboards for indexing, straighten it using the flattening jig itself, and then aligning it with one of the marks, and then put my weight on the one-third and two-thirds mark. Putting my weight on fairly evenly. That's really all there is to it. The same will be done to the other limb, therefore I won't show that. We'll save a little bit of time here. The real interesting part will be shaping the seas, because we're going to try and make something a little bit, I don't know, cool. They're going to be a little bit more garish, maybe. A little larger, rather than perfectly functional and minimalist. This is definitely going to be a fairly lightweight bow, so let me go ahead and see if that puffs up just a tiny bit. Okay. We can then use reflex in the handle to help control the final draw weight, but we want it to be on the light side. Especially considering that you're going to have fairly large, rigid, non-bending seas. So that will raise the effective draw weight. Good enough. Let's take it off, look at it. You can observe there's a slight curve to it. So bracing against the opposite side of the curve, you can then straighten it right on out. Perfect. That looks good. It does look pinched up here at the top though, so I'm going to be heating this just to make a nice more graceful transition. We don't want to hinge. So let's run that under some cool water. And I'll tell you what, let's go and correct that defect right now so you can see that process and then I will do the other side. But I won't show that to you since it's the same as the first. Focus right on that area. Small circles. I'd suggest reducing the heat a little bit since you are concentrating right on one spot and you don't want to burn. Keep moving it. Hit the sides. 
go in and out, maybe an inch or two. You'll see the crease start to disappear. And you'll see that portion of the pipe start to come back to round. And there it is. See? There's still a tiny indentation from where the crease was, but that's essentially gone now. So now I'm just going to sight down the limb and make sure it's straight so as it cools there's no problem. And then I'm going to go and flatten and uh, do the other limb. Here Check back in a few minutes. The fully straightened, flattened piece of PVC. All that's now remained uh, to do, let's go and make the C is. I'm going to mark out 8 inches on each limb. I like to mark the sides rather than the flats, not only because removing the marks if you're going to uh, scrape it off later is easier on the sides rather than on the flats, but because that way you can see it from both sides as you're rotating it. Provides a better index. So let's just do one together. Reduce the heat somewhat. And heat the flats. Don't heat the corners. You don't want the pipe to burn. PVC, when it's flattened particularly, tends to want to split. The narrower the pipe, the worse. The uh, smaller, the thinner the walls, the worse it'll happen. And the higher the heat you're using, the worse it'll happen. So just move around a lot. Take your time. If you want to make a contact recurve, the easiest way to do it is to leave the limb flat. There are several ways to cut the limbs to then uh, turn it into a contact recurve that'll still have a nice thin shape. But in general, what we're going to be doing is going to be non-contact. You can do it as a contact recurve, but that requires you to build some sort of string bridge or something like that. Not that that's difficult, that's just not what I'm planning. So, it's slightly coming round now, and you can just see that. And as it comes round, you can then start to hit the sides. Hit the sides. We want it to be completely soft so that we can shape it again. That's pretty good. So, now that it's softened and fully round, let's take our flattening jig and let's flatten it. So, first of all, I'm going to use the jig to bend the, the CF forward and curve it slightly. Then I'm going to put weight on it like so. I'll move it to the edge of the table that I'm using and then I can maneuver the uh, other end that I'm holding in my hand to make sure that it's centered. You can always adjust it later, so don't get panicked if it's not. I like to add a little bit of curve at this stage. I just think it makes it more elegant, but you don't have to. You can leave it arrow straight and then curve it later. You can leave it arrow straight. It doesn't matter. All of these things are up to you. I'm just going to make this one, yeah, I think, nice, curved, Fairly elegant. Some people leave the bump on the handle to the front, some on the back. That really doesn't matter. That's again up to you. I tend to prefer to do it. I leave the handle bump, if there is one, on the back of the bow. A lot of people put it on the belly. I don't know if it's superior, if one way is better than the other, but I find I tend to get fewer limb folds at the crease where the limb meets the handle. So that's my feeling about it, at least. Okay. And you can move it around. Since, again, this is wood, it's going to hold heat better. So move both the jig and where you're cooling it, the, the place on the table that it's resting, so then it'll cool off a little faster. There you go. I'm going to go and run that under some water. But first, check it for straightness, and it's perfect. It's perfect. 
it's been cooled, but if it were still hot and it were off, grab it. I like to hold it like so, and then bend it against the table like this or like this, checking, checking the alignment, and then eventually you'll have it just straight in line. You could also hold it braced against your leg and bend like this back and forth. You could uh, you could jam this into something and then just steer this like an oar, I guess. Whatever gives you leverage, whatever you like, it doesn't really matter. The only point, because we're going to replicate this on the other side, is that eventually we're going to heat this transition up to make it a little bit more graceful and elegant. And that's really it. Once we do that, we're done. And we just have to cut the, uh, the sia away, and I'm going to make it fairly rounded. It's going to start off at a point and come back to full round right about here. And that's about it. I won't show you forming the other sea. And then we'll get back to where we shaped this and cut the knocks and get it all ready. Here it is. This is the finished wood elf bow. It is wood decorated with some, or wood grain that is, decorated with a lovely scroll, vine scroll, the sias, fairly large, flattened, rounded at the top to a point, and a fairly good deflex at the handle area ensures it has a low draw weight, still picks up enough force to be substantial. It's a pretty delicate looking bow, elegant, and I think on the hold it's going to shoot very nicely. It's a lovely bow. Note the long loops to accommodate the sias. Yeah, it's very good. I like it a lot. See if you can take a look there at the, the decoration on the limbs. Nothing out of this world. Fairly standard and fairly just attractive. Put Golden Horde bows, my name, on the other side. There it is. It's as easy as that. Now tell me you can't do the same thing. I did happen to do a leather handle. In the future, I'm going to start punching and stitching leather, but that's a project for another day. For now, this is uh, what I'm doing. I hope you liked it. So, if you did, subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. It's very cool to see all the great comments and stuff that happens. You can join us down in the PVC Archery and Crafting community on Google+. If you like, I can put a link down there. It's another wonderful place where people are just coming up with insanely cool ideas all the time. We're sharing and doing a lot of cool stuff. So, thanks for watching, YouTube.